Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and thank you so much for joining me for another video. Today's video is everything you need to know about visiting Milford Sound. So I'm gonna share with you my tips and tricks to save money and to make the most out of your trip. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So number one is where to stay. Milford Sound only has one hotel and it's extremely expensive. It's over 500 New Zealand dollars per night. Something to mention though, is they do have camper van spots in Milford Sound that go for about $70 a night and they are powered. So if you're able to get one of those spots and you'd like to camp, definitely check into that. Another option for accommodation is you can do an overnight cruise in Milford Sound. That'll run you about 500 New Zealand dollars per person for just one night. But if you're looking to do something like an anniversary trip or a birthday trip or something special, then that might be a really good option because going to sleep and waking up in Milford Sound would be really amazing. But if you are on a budget and you don't like to spend that much money on accommodation like me, then the best option is to stay in Teano. There are lots of accommodation options from hotels, motels, Airbnbs, they got it all. We stayed at the Tasman Holiday Park for 123 New Zealand dollars for the night. And that was in a hotel style room. So it had its own bathroom. It had very comfortable beds, a TV, everything, all the creature comforts. The drive from Teano to Milford Sound is about two hours. I did see a lot of people online saying to give yourself like more like three hours but it took us just two hours. We didn't stop along the way. We thought if we wanted to, we'd stop on the way back. Honestly, there weren't many spots that we wanted to stop at. There was one place on the way back we stopped at, which we'll get into later. Teano is a really cute little town. They have tons of shops and restaurants and places to go shopping. There's a waterfront walk. They have a four square, which is a grocery store if you don't know. So they have it all. And honestly, I was really happy and pleased with our stay in Teano. I think the town is very underrated and it could be a destination in its own. I believe this start of the Milford track, which is one of the great walks in New Zealand, starts in Tano as well. So number two is where to park. From June 1st, 2023, this year, when I'm making this video, they've increased the prices of parking in Milford Sound. It's very, very limited in terms of parking. It's $10 an hour in the paid lots. And when I booked the cruise, it did say that you could prepay like $25 and that would get you five hours worth of parking. To me, that's a little bit crazy. So this is my tip for you if you don't wanna pay for parking. There is a free parking area called Deepwater Basin that you can drive into. It's pretty no frills and it's about a 20 minute walk to the visitor center. But if you wanna save yourself like 20, 30 bucks, park there, get there early because it's very limited. When we parked there, there were lots of camper vans in that area. Well, I don't know how many people know about this. I don't know if I should even be telling the internet because I kind of want to keep it a secret, but if you're watching this video and you're going to go there, make sure you do that if you want to save some money. I'm doing y'all a service. Number three, the cruise itself. There are tons of tour operators in Milford Sound. We ended up going with Real NZ because they were having a sale on their website for 10% off. Code is Milford10. I don't know if it's still active or not whenever you're watching this video, but they might have a different deal going on or you can shop around and see what other operators are having a sale. I'm not affiliated with Real NZ at all, um, but if someone from Real NZ is watching this video, hit me up. We ended up paying 98 New Zealand dollars each with that discount code. I believe the regular price is 119 New Zealand dollars per person. I do recommend booking directly with a tour operator instead of a third party website. Same with hotels and everything like that. If you book with a third party and something goes wrong, it can be a really huge hassle to fix things. Whereas if you book directly with the operator, usually they will make it work right away or you won't even have an issue to begin with. I also recommend to plan and book to the forecast if you can. We ended up booking our cruise last minute because our schedules were really flexible and we didn't want to go and it was completely overcast and pouring rain. Although I have heard it is quite spectacular in the rain. For me personally, I just prefer it to be a little bit sunny. I also recommend going to the visitor center a little bit early, like 30 minutes to an hour early. So you can walk around, take in the sights and get a lot of gorgeous photos. I recommend bringing your camera, bring your cell phone, bring all of the devices you want to take amazing footage because it is incredibly stunning. It was one of the top things we've done in New Zealand. And you're definitely gonna want to record it so that you can remember it in the years to come. 
I also recommend booking the earliest cruise that you can. We did the 11 a.m., which I believe was the first cruise they did that day. It was virtually empty. And then when we got back around noon, the noon cruise was full. Like there were 40 times as many people going on that cruise as the first one in the morning. So if you wanna avoid the crowds, go to the very earliest cruise you can go on. A few things that I also recommend bringing are a waterproof jacket, you do get really close to a waterfall near the end and you're gonna get a little bit wet. So if you wanna protect your clothing and camera equipment and everything, make sure you bring a waterproof coat and waterproof gear. If you're gonna go in the off season, in the fall or summer or spring, it can be a little bit chilly. So you do wanna bundle up, wear a sweater and maybe a jacket. It doesn't seem like it's that cold, but once you get out on the water and it's really, really windy, it, it it bites and it can get you. I also recommend to bring bug spray. Okay, so this is something that we meant to do, but we lost our bug spray. I still to this day have no idea where it went, but there are sand flies absolutely everywhere. The rumors are true. This is probably the worst place for sand flies in New Zealand. There are millions of them and they will fly into your face constantly. Once you're out on the cruise and you're going and the wind is blowing, you're not really gonna have any sand flies around. But when you're walking around the visitor center area, they're everywhere. So my fourth and final tip is to still go if you can't afford to go on the cruise. You could park in the free lot, like I said earlier, in Deepwater Basin, walk into town. There is a short hike up to a viewpoint that you can do. It's kind of behind the staff accommodations, I want to say. I'll try and link it down below so you can see where the trailhead is. But if you don't have the money to go into the cruise, definitely still go if you're able to. Walk around the waterfront. There's amazing views of Mitre Peak, like that classic Milford Sound shot with the water in front and then the big peak. Like I'll. Obviously, I'll insert some footage here so you know what I'm talking about. I really think it's worth it to do the cruise if you can make it happen, but if you can't, I still say go and check it out at least just to walk around and see the area because the drive is epic and it's so beautiful. But if you are gonna go this way and stop, just be aware of the Kias. The Kia birds will basically take no prisoners. They will rip your car to shreds. They will rip every piece of plastic. They'll chew every little chunk they can. So if you're in a rental car, I would not bother stopping just to save yourself any kind of insurance claim because of the Kia birds. They're very cheeky and they're very funny, but they will destroy your car. So this probably goes without saying, but allow yourself more time if you're going to be traveling to Milford Sound in the winter or during a storm or in the high season like summer or on any holiday. So I hope this video helps you guys plan your trip to Milford Sound and thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you really soon in the next video. Bye.